Hey what's up guys, it's your local asset reviewer here and I've been receiving a lot of comments lately asking for the assets that I use for my speed level designs so therefore I decided to record this video for you guys and talk about my essentials and favorite ones and um, I mean you know obviously being the nice guy that I am I'm also going to leave all the links in the description so that you can easily check out these assets that I like oh and also don't forget to join our discord server which is going to be linked in the description you can use it to share your projects you can use it to promote your own stuff and just kind of discuss with like-minded people inside of game development so just feel free to join and say hi to everybody and if you guys would like to see more of these videos make sure to drop a like down below all the thumbs ups are super appreciated and with that being said Let's get started. Alright, so we have got three different assets to cover in this video, so I will go through them really quickly. And if you would like me to increase the number of assets we cover in these videos, make sure to leave a comment on this video and let us know. So first up, we have an asset named Mad Goat SSA A. <laughs> I can't say that. Mad Goat SSAA and resolution scaling made by Mad Goat Assets. There we go. Thank you so much. That was so difficult to pronounce. But if you've been a subscriber for a while, you might recognize this asset from a past giveaway that we ran on the channel, actually. And if you're new, we usually run giveaways on this channel, by the way, which are hosted over at our Discord server. You can find the link to that in the description down below. But basically, Mad Goat's SSAA <laughs> has been one of my favorite assets ever since I started using it. And I've literally included in every single one of my level designs I made for this channel. So if you're not familiar with what SSAA is, it basically stands for Super Sampling Anti-Aliasing and it's one of the highest quality anti-aliasing methods out there. It basically works by rendering the whole image at a higher resolution and then downsampling it to the screen resolution so that it matches. That basically helps smoothening those jizzly edges of your objects and makes vegetation such as grass look more alive by rendering more smooth outlines for them. Also, I personally find Mad Goat's asset to be highly optimized for games, which makes it feel like a very game-ready asset. Since you don't really have to go through the code and edit something, you basically have this simple custom inspector for the asset, which you can use to make sure everything rolls on smoothly in your game by configuring all the components. And this this is a very crucial topic for me especially because obviously this is the most powerful solution for anti-aliasing out there so it's very important to have a very well optimized asset so that it doesn't break your game on any platform you're trying to target. And the second asset that I would like to recommend you guys is called Desktop Grass Package released by Speedtree. This is an asset pack which has been around for a while honestly but I still wanted to include it because I use it in most if not all of my level design right now. These are basically gorgeous grass models you can use to add some vegetation to your scenes. I also want to repeat something to make sure everybody understands this. These are grass models, like literally 3D models. So these are not the billboarded textures you're used to having on your terrain. You can place these on your terrain as well, but they will go there as tree instances. Now, does this make a huge difference? Honestly, no, not really. Essentially, this just means that you will need to use LOD or level of detail in case you're making a bigger map and plan on using a lot of these. The only con of using 3D grass models instead of textures is that they're heavier on your game's performance, but with the right optimization techniques you're using, such as LOD in this case, you can easily make your games run smoothly while you have a bunch of these anyway. On the other hand, the pros, however, are many. So first and foremost, obviously, they look gorgeous. In fact, much better than just plain texture grass. You also get a ton of customization for these, such as picking what kind of wind effect you want them to have. By the way, just sidetracking a little bit, but I recommend using Palm for realistic wind and you also get to pick like if there is going to be a hue transition and what kind of color you want the hue to be and stuff like that so it's very cool and what I like with speed trees grass packs is that they are all ready to be used out of the box so you don't really necessarily have to modify every little thing you get to play around with you can just use them as they are and then if you decide to customize something so that it fits better with your game you can easily do so through the materials that are provided already all right so last but not least we have a pack by manufacturer 
Ultra K4, which you probably already recognize the name, and the pack is called Rock and Boulders 3. This one has been my personal favorite whenever it comes to building cliffs, mountains, placing little small pebbles, or even larger stones. With this pack, you basically get 26 types of boulders and stones, 22 different rock formations, PBR textures with support for albedo, ambient occlusion, and metallic maps, and also LOD support. These models are highly optimized and game ready, and they still maintain high fidelity customization options so that you can make them suit your games. For instance, you can add grass or snow on all of these rocks, so there's support for that. You can also edit how mossy they are in case you want to change the intensity of AO, ambient occlusion, detailed texture size, and stuff like that, so it's super super interesting death and I've been using this pack ever since I got it honestly in every single one of my level designs if I'm going to be completely transparent I'll be honest though it pretty much gives me reason to use more rocks and boulders in my levels since they do look gorgeous because I personally always had trouble finding some good looking rocks and boulders and stuff like that and now I feel like this one is what really fills in that little gap that I always had whenever I was designing a level. And that is pretty much it for this video guys, hope you all enjoyed it. I, I know that it was a little short for my typical kind of length of videos, but I'm now trying to target like 5 to 10 minutes kind of videos like I'm not trying to go above 10 minutes because it kind of becomes a little bit too long even for me to watch so I could only imagine you guys at your pain uh, sitting there and listening to my beautiful voice obviously um, but before ending the video I just want to give you a huge shout out to Richard Stance, Cupola, Trombear MCP and GI Jojo for all of their support on Patreon and obviously everybody else who is pledging something in case you're interested in checking out more information about Patreon and how you can support the content, make sure to click the link in the description down below. And once again, thank you so much for watching, hope you all enjoyed this, and if you did, make sure to leave a like down below so that I can tell that you want more of this type of content because I'm planning to make more of these videos. Also make sure to comment which one of these assets is your favorite one, or maybe if you have another asset you would like me to check out, or even everybody else watching obviously because your comments are a little bit more public. Uh, and last but not at least obviously if you're new around here make sure to subscribe so that you stay up to tune for new content coming up because we have a lot of cool videos coming so with that being said i'll catch you guys later in the comments or in the discord server see you guys peace out have a good night I